right, a couple of items in brief uh, from the advertising world. Uh, Southern Comfort has launched a new through-the-line campaign with a unique creative that gives respect to those who embody something called self-comfortableness. In partnership with the uh, global agency Wyden & Kennedy New York, the campaign entitled Whatever's Comfortable has just been launched locally. Ads24 has announced the finalists of the fourth annual Think Afrikaans competition. The challenge was to design a t-shirt that would also be the cover for an Afrikaans graphic novel. The winner will be announced at the upcoming Pendurung Awards in Cape Town later this month. And the Advertising Standards Authority has ordered Cape Town Fish Market to withdraw their latest ad after complaints of it being racist. Two viewers filed complaints against the ad that depicted a black politician dictator as being corrupt. According to the ASA, the advert was discriminatory and likely to cause offence to black South Africans. Now, new research is showing an increasing number of young people are simply growing bored with traditional forms of media. A brand new online offering is aiming to change all of that by offering Generation Y news in their language. It's an initiative from journalist Daniela Lowe. Why stream comes from Generation Y? Um, because that's who we're talking to. It's people post-1980, really, who were born post-1980. And looking at my peers and understanding or seeing very quickly that they don't read newspapers, that they were reading or getting their news online mostly, and then through peer recommendations. They weren't necessarily going to a news site every day and looking up the news and getting involved in a news story. Um, and that's what gave me the idea, how do you make news hip and interesting enough for people under 30 to want to read and to want to get involved in. The major problem was the language, the traditional news sites. The words are too big, they just don't understand what you're talking about. So we've developed a way of talking as if we're having a conversation with them, using slang, using colloquial terms um, and being really relaxed about it. So we write that way, we write the way this generation speaks. They have nicknames for things. So when we're talking about Obama, we say obesity. It's a very relaxed, very conversational style. And there's a lot of opinion thrown in because they're very opinionated. Although they don't have the context, they're incredibly opinionated. In every story, we'll have little highlighted words. So you can click on the highlighted word and it gives you background into what we're talking about. So whether it be a slang term, you can click on it, or whether it be somebody's name, Barack Obama, for example, you click on it and we give you a little bit of history about who he is. Um, so that's where the info and the geography and that sort of stuff, the background knowledge comes in. The Inner Pop Suck series is, is a fun name for, for telling big news stories, Syria being the latest obviously, um, knowing that these, this generation doesn't have any background knowledge on it. So we'll say Syria and a Pop Suck. Um, they click on that and it then in literally 300 words gives them a background on what's happened. We've shown them clips of the chemical warfare exam for example, um, we show them a picture of al-Assad, we show them infographics to understand it. Um, so it's really just a slang term for in a nutshell. The journalists that we have are all kind of student level also um, and are part of this generation. They, they, they understand the problem because it's them and their friends that haven't really consumed news before. They're all journalism students. Um, or have graduated as journalism students, but they're really interested by the online stuff because that's obviously where this generation lives. All the research we've done is based in the sort of 16 to 24 age range, but there is a lot of, a lot of our traffic is 24 to 35 actually. So I'm finding that it's not going to be, I mean, I think we're gonna cover all the bases, but it's not going to be just a student read. Um, I think a lot of 30-somethings are quite bored with the way they're consuming news at the moment. I don't want them to, to read Ystream until they're 65. They're going to grow out of Ystream. Ystream is, is a very sort of edgy product. But the point here is to try and get this generation into a habit of reading news. We want, them, we want to hook them with news through, through Ystream. Um, I want them to get, go log on to Ystream every day and get into that habit of consuming news. Once they've done that, they'll slowly, through us, learn about all the other newspapers and all the other websites, and they'll slowly start filtering up into those, which is my intention. My intention really is to get a younger generation interested in news, otherwise we have this huge gap of people 20 years from now which have no news habit, and that just, one couldn't live with that. 
All right, let's stay with the uh, dissemination of news. And this little nugget of newspaper information from the big media agency, the Media Shop, sparked our interest. Total daily and weekend circulation from 1997 through 2013 down 23%. But listen to this. Total community papers are up 106% over the same period. Chris Boerter from the agency is going to tell us what that means for the future of newspapers. Welcome. Good to talk to you, Chris. Thank the future you. of newspapers. It's easy. We don't even need to talk about this. Local titles. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, I think what the, what the local titles get right is that they address a need that's currently not being addressed. A, local news, mm. and they address it in a format that you want it. You want it for free. Uh, I think where the daily newspapers have fallen flat is that they supply news that is in essence old, that you could have gotten online or sure. on social media, and you have to pay for it. Uh, so community newspapers absolutely is the future. Mm. I think the second part why community newspapers are so successful is because relatively speaking in South Africa, we're still an underserviced community newspaper market. Only about 10 years ago did Soweto receive its first community newspapers. Uh, areas like Kwamashu uh, in KZN are only receiving community newspapers now. And those are very media hungry markets, very viable markets for advertisers. But they haven't received community newspapers before. Is there a sense that the quality of local newspapers, and let's be honest, in the past it's been pretty horrible in places. Is there a sense that that quality is starting to improve? I think it might be. I think, again, it goes back to understand the understanding and getting under the skin of the local market. The hunger for that local content is absolutely massive. And that's why, again, in markets like mm. Soweto, Kwamashu, and even in Randburg and Sandton, you're finding that those newspapers are being effectively used by advertisers mm. and are actually being consumed by the consumer. Mm. Is the advertising strategy as far as community newspapers changing? And I'll tell you why I ask you this question. Get your community newspapers newspaper in the past, maybe even these days, you hold it upside down and you do that, okay, out come the flyers. That's still the case, but one also senses maybe agencies, brands are taking these titles a little bit more seriously. You're right in both mm. ways. So let's talk first of all about the retailers and the leaflets that yeah. you would shake out. I think I always say to people that if you go look at what retailers do, retailers are the consummate measurers of advertising. Mm. And you go ask any retailer whether they want to cancel their community newspaper inserts or whether they want to cancel their TV ads, they'll tell you they'll rather cancel the TV ads. Community newspapers are infinitely measurable and they're doing incredibly well for them. Mm. So are, they are an incredibly effective medium to use. I think, however, what community newspapers have done is they've, they've shifted the focus away from being a, a retail and insert only medium mm. to being a medium that if you want saturated coverage in Santon, it can do it better. It can cover every Every single household in Santon better than any other medium in South Africa. All right, mainstream titles. Now let's move away from let's move away from community titles. Where is the pressure? Is it on weekly papers or daily papers? Daily newspapers under massive, massive pressure mm. at the moment, and similarly so weekend newspaper. I'd say there's a slight let up on weekend newspapers. I think a newspaper like the Sunday Times still comes with a lifestyle element to it. Mm. Waking up in the morning, getting the paper, lying on the couch, and reading the newspaper. You make the interesting point in your report that English titles are in more trouble perhaps than Afrikaans titles. Why is that? I, I think they're, they're slightly less under pressure because I think, again, if you go look at uh, news content, Afrikaans news content, there is only so much Afrikaans news content. English news content is readily available wherever you want sure. to. That's the only thing that kind of saves the day for Afrikaans daily newspapers, but, but this much. Mm. In not, not. conclusion, Chris Boerter, this isn't a South African trend worldwide. Uh, newspapers are facing exactly the same problem and community newspapers as we've been discussing are also on the rise mm -hmm. in, in, in bigger more mature markets mm -hmm. than ours. Absolutely, absolutely. I think if you go look at what daily and weekly newspapers are going through at the moment, it's, it's a scary sight because it's like a car parked in a downy with a handbrake off. There's not a lot blocking it at the moment and the, and the, the, the decline is happening and happening fast. I think the evening standard stand to be corrected in the UK mm -hmm. was the only newspaper who eventually said we're not selling the newspaper anymore. Now it's they're handing, out, handing it out for free. Maybe that's the future. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the insight. Thank you very much for joining us at Chris Boerter from the Media Shop. So here's the question for you as uh, the conversation continues. Uh, to what extent are you engaging with newspapers, if at all? You can start and then join the debate on our Facebook page on this address. Coming up on the program, our best and worst ads of the week. News that moves. ENCA.com.